Hey, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is episode two of my Quick Tips Lesson series. This is a series of eight short and simple videos, each of them designed to give you a profound concept that I hope you will find yourself thinking about and still using many years down the road. In this lesson, we are going to take care of some of the biggest challenges that we have when practicing. Uh, challenge number one, being not knowing what to practice. What should I practice next? Or how do I work on getting this thing down that I want to work on? Challenge number two is not knowing if we're making progress. Can I even tell if I'm improving? I'm practicing so much. How do I know if I'm getting better? And challenge number three is the worst of all. It's, is this even possible for me? Um, how, how is this ever going to happen? How am I going to get this down? Well, with this practice strategy that I'm going to show you, uh, you are going to have absolute clarity on what you should be practicing. You're going to have a clear track record on seeing your improvement and how you're getting better. And you're going to see how we can take small chunks of things and then create bigger and bigger chunks over time to actually get anything down and really reliably be able to play it accurately and nearly perfectly. It's really simple. It's a four step process. And that is that we want to design, practice, test, repeat very simple. We know about practicing. We know about repeating. That's usually what we do. Okay. Practice, repeat, practice, repeat. That's how we're practicing all the time. What about designing and testing? Well, designing is simply defining as clearly as possible, all of the rules that we want to follow, all of the parameters that are in place for executing a piece of music or an exercise, everything that we want to say, this is how you have to play it to have it be considered that you played it correctly to then kind of past the level so we know if we're getting better or not and then move on to the next thing once you've designed how you want to play the exercise or the piece of music then you can actually put it to the test and putting it to the test means did we play through exactly the rules that we set for ourselves did we play that uh correctly and not just correctly once we want to play it at least three times in a row correctly at least three times more is better i often do three five seven ten or twenty and you don't even just want to do three times in a row or multiple times in a row because we do that sometimes. Oh, I did it right. Did it right. Did it right. Cool. Three times. We actually want to play it right. Stop. Count it. Tangibly count it. This is usually what I'll do. I'll have like a pile of picks sitting in front of me on a table or chair, wherever I am. And if I get it right, play a little thing. It could be tiny. could be big. could be a whole piece of music. could be a tiny little thing. When you play it right, you scoot the pick over and there's a pile over on this side. Scoot it over. Do it again. Play it right scoot it over, play it again, make a mistake. Anytime you scoot them all back and you start over at zero again, until you get the amount in a row that you designed for yourself that you're going to play correctly. So this is very, very powerful. Let's do an example of this. Let's say you want to work on your arpeggio chord tones. So this is C major triad, just the chord tones in one position one arpeggio shape, I often call it. And I have a free download of all the arpeggio shapes, five positions of 12 different chords. Uh, you can download that with the link in the top of the description, totally for free. Uh, but this is a great thing to work on for so many reasons. So say you're working on that. And this is how we usually would practice. Just, okay, I'm playing it up and down, doing it, practicing it. Cool, that seems good. I'm gonna go on to the next one. And like, yeah, I practiced that a bunch. I should have it down. Well, how do we really know? So we want to design now what constitutes uh, having played it exactly how we want to play it. So let's design it right now. Let's say we want to play it with eighth notes at a certain tempo. Let's say 120 beats per minute. 120 beats per minute. Uh, we're going to play eighth notes. We're going to do alternate picking strictly with the right hand. You can design it any way you want, just putting these parameters out there. I'm going to play from the lowest note to the highest note and back down, just like I was doing. And I'm going to do that three times in a row perfectly, or without a mistake, I should say. So let's give it a try. Played it correctly once. I'll pause that just so the beeping isn't in the way. I usually would keep that going. Scoot this over. And, or you can use, just, I use a counter app sometimes. Scoot it over, cool, and then I'm gonna try it again. Okay, scoot it over, I'm gonna try it again. Cool, I did it three times in a row. Now I have a sense of accomplishment. I have passed that level. 
even if it felt easy, I'm like, cool, well now can I do the next shape, the next position three times in a row in that same way. And the next one, three times in a row, maybe a different chord type, maybe a diff on, on the, off of a different route. And this gives me this way of concretely moving on. And then of course you could do more than three times in a row um, as well. So that's a tiny, tiny little chunk. You can do this with anything, do it with a real piece of music, do it with um, even smaller chunks than that, whatever. And you can design it however you want. But let's say you got all five positions and you did them individually like that. And you say, but I really want to have this down. I want to have it be fluid all over the fretboard. I want to be able to connect between them. Well, then you might say, okay, well, how about I play all five shapes, same rules. And I might say I can do a quarter note between them. So I have a moment to uh, transition. So let's try, you'll see what I mean. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Slide it over, try it again, try to get three times in a row. This is extremely powerful. When you are two times in and you're trying to get that third time, or you're trying to do 10 times in a row and you're at the ninth, as you get more correct, you're going to feel actually nervous. It's going to be nerve wracking. That's why it works. This heightens our sense of focus, our sense of awareness, our motor skills, uh, opens up neuroplasticity because we're kind of freaking out a little bit. And that's how that happens. This keeps us honest. If, if there's something you think you have down, design exactly the rules for it and give it a shot. Um, that way, kind of test yourself on it and it can give you um, clarity as to where some of the gaps are in our actual playing, give us a clear focus on where to practice next. And like I said, you can do this in anything, real piece of music. Can you do the first two measures? without a mistake, three times at a certain tempo, then the next two, then combine them to the first four, then do the next four, then do the first eight, in whatever way you wanna do this. If we go about this way of practicing, it's the surest way, as sure as we can get, to almost guaranteeing that we play something um, as perfectly as possible the first time when it matters, when we're under pressure, when it's stressful, when we're on stage, when we're auditioning, when we're playing for our family, when you're recording something, uh, to send to your friend, whatever kind of version of like, I hope I get this right. We need to simulate the, I hope they, I get this right feeling when we are practicing. Part of this is that we get structure and a sense of accomplishment for the, for the good playing. And we get a little punishment for the mistakes, right? By the time you've gotten three times in a row, correct already, you've played it correctly many, many more times than that because of all the times that you got a few and then slid it back as you made a mistake. Uh, so by, sliding back when we make a mistake. We don't just keep playing with no uh, harm done. We actually are like, oh, we feel something from it. We have to do something from it. There's a, there's a result from playing wrong and there's a re reward uh, when we play it correctly. So you can get very, very creative with how you design these things. We can add something called stress variables. And this is where in your design, in, in your parameters, you can make up things that add stress which is what it's gonna be like when we are actually in real life situations. One of my favorite things to do is to design my exercise exactly. Now, part of that design be that I'm gonna leave the room. I'm gonna go close the door, leave, and I'm gonna come in, open the door, close it, sit down, pick up the guitar, boom, have to play it right the first time. Slide that over if I do, put the guitar back down, go outside, come back in, sit down and do it again. No one will be around, but I will be nervous. And that is why it works. Um, I used to play a lot of gigs and this exact way of practicing saved me a million times over. Um, whether it's having to learn a ton of music in a short amount of time or just something was way harder than I thought it was gonna be or just whatever tight knit situation. Uh, it might be like, oh, I have to leave for dress rehearsal in like three hours and this is way harder than I thought it was gonna be and I have to get this down. I would go full focus on this method and it works. It just, it's the super food dense version of actually practicing. Um, if you're interested in working on exactly what I was uh, playing there, I have my chord tone arpeggio pack totally free. There's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to chord tones, <laughs> sound guitar lessons.com slash chord tones. Uh, and you can get that. It's 12 different chords, five positions, each 
laid out for you all in the root of C shows the uh, theory numbers of the chords and everything. Very cool resource to practice if that's something that you're looking for uh, working on. The next episode of this series, I'm going to talk about how working on and learning and playing every song we know and every song we're going to work on, doing it in one key can deepen our knowledge of music in a way that I think we're often looking for and help us hear and identify what's happening music in music a little better as well. So that's going to be a cool lesson. Hope to see you there. Take care and happy practicing.